Hi, I'm Javis Lewis, and in this video I'm going to show you how to launch an app with command line parameters on a Mac. This is something that is a little bit difficult, so I'm going to show you the whole process um, and I'll uh, use Blender as an example. Blender is a 3D rendering and modeling application and it's entirely written in Python and as such I can pass command line parameters to it. So in this video we're going to have a look at the following steps. First of all, how do we launch an app from the command line so that we can pass parameters? Usually I guess we're used to launching apps via double clicking an icon or via the launch pad as Apple have called it, but that's not the only way to launch an app. So you can launch pretty much any app on your Mac via the command line. And that is necessary if you want to if you have to pass parameters, Google Chrome developer parameters and so forth. And then I'm going to show you, once we've learned that, how to create an Automator app. If you've never used Automator before, it's a built-in utility in your Mac that can do a great many things, including building your own app, or more or less a launcher-type app that can pass parameters. And we'll have a look how to do that. And um, then uh, once we've done that, the Automator app will have this little auto logo, uh, which uh, I'll, I'll show you in a moment, but you may want to replace that with the app you're actually launching. So I'll, I'll show you how to do that as well. And uh, finally, we're going to add it to our dock so that it looks just like a normal app and we can launch it with the parameters. The tools I'm going to use for this are Blender 2.7a, just as a demo. So this would be replaced with the app that you're actually going to be using. I'm also going to use Automator 2.6, which is, of course, included in Mac OS X El Capitan. This approach has worked in the last, well, I guess, 10 versions of uh, Mac OS X, so I'm pretty sure it'll work with OS X or Mac OS Sierra as well and anything that happens going forward. Without further ado, let's hack that Mac. To launch our app from the command line, we need, obviously, the command line utility, and that is this little icon here is called Terminal, and you will find it in your Mac's applications under the Utilities folder, and it's just called Terminal. It's got this little icon here. And as soon as you launch it, you get a screen similar to this. You can change the fonts and all the background colors and everything. Uh, if you've never used the command line before, this may look a little bit intimidating and scary, but chances are that if you need to pass parameters to a program that you want to launch from the command line, you probably will have used the command line before. So I'm not going to introduce you to every feature that the terminal application has to offer. Now to launch our app, let me bring up a finder window here as well, just under file, new finder window, that will do that. And under applications, I'm going to find the app I'm usually launching via the Mac interface. So in my case, that's Blender, and it's saved in a folder called Blender 278, and here it is. So if I double-click that, or if I drag that to the dock and click that thing on the dock, then it will open. Whoops, obviously I don't want to rename it, I just want to open it. And here we have it. Now, the thing I want to pass into my app is the change of a render engine. In Blender, we have two render engines, and we can change them up here. So by default, the Blender render engine is selected, but the other one is the Cycles render engine. And sometimes I may want to launch my app with this selected, which would be launching it without any parameters, and other times I may want to launch it with the Cycles render enabled. But I like two separate icons on my dock for that, so I'm going to show you how that works. Let me close this again, quit anyway indeed. And let's see how we can launch this from the command line. Well, any app that has a .app extension isn't actually a single file on a Mac. This is a folder which contains lots of files, and one of which is the one that we need to load or double-click in order for this thing to load. So in order to have a peek into this folder, we can right-click on it and select Show Package Contents. And if we do that, a seemingly new window opens that's called Contents. Uh, in it, we find several other options, several other folders, one of which is Resources, which contains logo files and so forth. And another one is the Mac OS folder, which in our case contains one executable file, which if I double-click that, Blender would launch. 
Now we're not uh, we're interested in this file indeed uh, because we know now it's called Blender, so that's the the command I need to type in. But I also need to provide the command line window, my terminal window here, the full path to that. Because if I just go over here and type Blender, my shell will tell me that command isn't found. There are ways around doing that. So if you work on the command line a lot, there are ways that you can teach the shell this the path to more folders than the default folders and then that f default folder will that that new folder will also be searched but we're not going to do that we're just going to give this terminal window the full path to it and to find out what that is we can type into here cd which means change directory followed by a space and then we go back to our finder window and we don't drag this app over we go to the folder just before that so in my case that's mac os and I'm going to select that folder, left click and drag it right into my terminal window. And that brings up the full path, which is applications, Blender 278, Blender.app, contents, Mac OS. And that's more or less exactly what we see here. So if I hit return, I'm changing the directory that I was previously in, which was my home directory, to the Blender directory, to inside the app bundle. With ls, we can list all the files in this directory, and there's not much going here, there's only Blender. Now, to launch this file, you may say, well, now that we're in that directory, we can just type Blender, and that'll be it, but I'm still being greeted with command not found. Why is that? I mean, I'm clearly in that directory. What's going on here? Well, it's a bash, Unix, Mac kind of issue. Even so we're in the current directory, this command here isn't executed because we need to tell the shell that we want to, in fact, look into the current folder. And we do that by prefixing our command with dot forward slash. So if I type dot forward slash followed by Blender, then Blender will just launch, just like a moment ago. So that's good. Now notice that we still have the Blender render engine activated here. And that's that's cool, that's good to know. Let me quit that again. So we're back on the command line and we're getting any text output that the application will deliver. Blender in this case is, is written in Python, so any output will be coming into this window via the Python engine. If I uh, click my cursor up, I can bring back the last command that I've typed in, if in case I'm a bit lazy and I don't want to type things over and over again. I can also step uh, back again and then it will bring back all my previous commands and cursor down will switch to, you know, switch the commands down again. So I want to launch Blender, but I want to pass a parameter here. So in my case, that is uh, two minus signs. Engine cycles. And if I type that in, then Blender will open, but it now has the Cycles Render Engine active. So this is what happens when I can when I launch an app with command line parameters. I can change the behavior of the app or the startup kind of, I can make startup modifications to the app. That's exactly what I want. So in my case, I'm just going to close this again. I want to launch Blender with Engine Cycles activated. But rather than opening this and finding the path and, and all that, I'd, I'd rather have an icon just like all the other ones that I have on the dock down here and just click that icon and make that icon launch the app, but have the icon launch the app with my startup parameters. Now here's the thing, how do we do that? With the help of our friend Otto. Otto is this little blue robot here that is uh, in charge of the Automator app. It's under applications and this guy here, this is Otto. Uh, the Automator app is uh, literally in the root folder of your application. So if you don't have this little icon down here, head over to your Applications folder and find the Automator. Here he is. You can launch it any which way. And you'll be greeted with a window like this. This prompts you to create something with the automator. So in our case, we want to create an application. So this is the little auto icon here. Uh, so select him and select choose. 
and uh, well now what we've got this big window here with all kinds of small scary text notice that this app has been around for many years which is why it looks a little outdated perhaps and not as sleek as the you know OS X Sierra type Mac OS Sierra kind of thing looks but it still fulfills its purpose and it's got a long list of things that we can use Automator for. Now you can either scroll down this very long list of things until you find something called launch shell script or you can just type that up here and just call, yeah there we go, run shell script that it is, just type shell and then we'll bring that right up. Double click it and then this window comes up and in it we have one, well it's kind of a test parameter, cat um, would list the contents of a file we don't want that so we can we can um, we can override that if we go back to my terminal window there's a couple of things that I need to know here first of all I need to change into this directory here that we did earlier the path of which we found out by dragging the finder folder into the application here so I'm going to copy that and paste it in here so that means change into my app bundle into this directory in which my command resides and I hit return to go to the next line here and then I can copy the command followed by my parameters into here as well so copy that and paste that in here so now we're basically telling the automator to do exactly what we did on the command line but it will wrap it up nicely in a dot app extension kind of file that's all we that's all we need here head over to file and save and save it anywhere you like you can save it in your applications but you can also save it in your desktop or in another application and uh, I'll call it blender special perhaps or whatever you want to call your app so save it and now we're done with automator we can close this and here it is I'm, I've saved it on my desktop so uh, there's my my special app here and if I double click that then I should open blender just like before with the cycles render engine activated success we love it there's only one other thing that we need to do I can actually at this point I can close the terminal window we don't need that anymore and I can also close, uh, well I'll leave this finder window open, we may need that in a moment. There's one thing that is perhaps a little bit annoying, the icon is now auto instead of my apps icon, which you know is a little bit disconcerting if I drag that to the dock then I don't really know in, you know, in a couple of weeks I will have forgotten what this is. So uh, in order to change that there's uh, something quite convenient but totally unobvious that we can do on the Mac. Right click this and select get info and that will bring up this little info box about my app and I'll have my icon here and it will contain where where exactly it is how much space it, it uses on my disk and so forth and I can also rename it here if I like but I can also change the icon and there's, there's really no obvious way to do that let us head over to the finder window again go back to my blender folder and do the same thing on the Blender app which has the correct icon here. Let me also right click on that and say get info. And now we have the real Blender app with the correct icon and I've got my homemade launcher app made with Automator with Otto's icon. Now in order to copy this icon from here to there you head over to the real icon that you want to use to the small icon at the top left and make sure you select it so that it highlights blue if you don't select it the command that you're going to use to copy uh, isn't going to work so just head over to edit and copy otherwise this isn't going to work then head over to your destination app and again select the auto logo here until it highlights blue and head over to edit paste voila Blender icon works with any icon if you don't like this icon choose another app and choose a different icon um, and uh, close it and this should clearly have changed now which it has not how interesting well, let's try this again there we go the preview has it but this doesn't seem to have it yet I really don't know why 
it's one of those things. I suppose if we just put that here, perhaps as a third logo in here, hey, then it changes. So I've got an old version of Blender, the current version of Blender, I've got my Blender special version now. So don't get frustrated if that happens. Um, the icon has in fact changed probably after a restart, this is gonna change on your desktop as well or wherever you've saved it. And uh, now it's on the dock. Launch it, Cycles Render Engine is active. And that is how you launch an app with command line parameters on your Mac. That was it. I hope this was helpful. If you liked this video, please subscribe to my channel and consider sharing this video with friends, family and total strangers. Bye for now. I will see you next time.